having dust issues? Well, the Science Smart Dust Shoe might just be the solution that you need. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of James Dean Designs. If you're new to the channel and love CNC, make sure you hit that subscribe button in the corner to get all the latest tutorials and reviews. And in today's episode, we're taking a look at the ScienceMark 52mm Dust Shoe. And the reason we're having a look at this is because obviously, as people move on with their 3018s, they either upgrade to a bigger spindle or they upgrade to a different machine with a bigger spindle as well. So we're typically talking about a three, four or 500 watt spindle which are all 52 millimeter in diameter. Now I like saying smart products so I thought I'd take a look at their dust shoe and see just how good it is. Now one thing I should probably point out is this is almost the version 2 of it. There was a smaller version made for the smaller 3018 spindles and this is kind of a follow on from that. I think they learned from some of the mistakes, improved some features and so yeah we're going to take a look at this, see all the features about it, then do a test with it and see just how good it is. So these are the components to the dust shoe. We've got the coupler which connects it to the body of the spindle, also where you connect your vacuum in order to extract the dust. We've got the middle body component and this allows the coupler to connect to one of the brushes and we've got two different length brushes. Now why do you have two different length brushes? Well it is different scenarios depending on the length of the bit that you're after. One thing I would say is the longer brush can actually be a little bit dangerous. If we push, push these bristles in we can actually see that they touch each other. Now if you've got a bit spinning in there at some something like 12,000 RPM, there is a chance that that could catch. So whilst it does have some uses, you need to be very careful when using the longer bristles. What you may simply do is cut these down a little bit to be somewhere in between the long and the short one. Now the short one's pretty good because we can push those in and those don't meet. So it does mean that the bit can spin in the middle, but it should still have enough length, obviously, to suck the dust up as we're machining. Now to hold all this together, they've got a series of magnets going across the different parts with different polarities. So basically what it means is you can't put two parts together that shouldn't go together. And I'll show you literally how simple this is and how well, how strong the magnets are. So this is the uh, the coupler to the spindle. You just hover it over, it connects automatically. If I flip that over and hover it over and it connects again. And these are held together fairly tight. So the magnets on them are really strong. Now if I take that back apart, and for example, let's try and connect the coupler to the brush without the middle body piece. If I come over and try and push that together, you can just see it's moving away. It will not let them connect together. So it's a bit of a safety feature, but it also means that you can only connect it the right way because you need this middle body piece to ensure the dust can be extracted. On these pieces as well, there is also a very slight ridge around them. And this just helps to center everything so that when you do connect them, it just makes sure everything aligns perfectly and you get the completed dust shoe all in one go. Now, if we take a look closer look at the coupler itself to hold it to the spindle, we've got two little set screws on the back here. Obviously, you're provided with the Allen key, the Allen bolt um, to tighten these up. And this is also cast aluminium, so it means it's nice and solid on the body itself and gives you enough hold when you're putting it into the spindle. If I bring the spindle in now, I'll just quickly show how it goes over. Obviously, this is a 300 watt spindle. The dust shoe itself will fit a 3, 4 and 500 watt spindle. And all you simply do is once it's in place, just tighten these up a little bit and it will then hold itself in place. It doesn't need to be too tight, but obviously enough to stop it moving. Then you can slide the body over the top and then obviously the dust shoe on there as well. And that is your completed dust shoe, obviously slightly different when it is on the machine. And if for any reason you need to change the parts over, you just pop one off, put the other one on, and again, it clips into place nice and easily. Now, if I take that one off and just put the shorter brush back on, and what we can just about see there, hopefully, if I get the angle right on the camera, is obviously there's the collet, and that's about the length you're going to have. So with a one eighth bit in or something similar, it should just be enough length to where these bristles are about touching the material. Maybe a slight gap in between, but that helps with the airflow and suction in as well. And then again, when you come to take it off, you just simply release these with a very slight turn and it comes undone and will simply slide off 
and you've got your dust shoe back to normal. Now I also like the fact that the dust shoe itself is clear so you can see what is going on inside of it. If anything is clogging up, if there's any bits stuck and causing a blockage somewhere, I say everything is visible. Even the fact you can see the collet holder itself just in case anything starts to become a problem with that. So the one advantage of these as opposed to something like the 3D printed ones as I say is the fact it is nice and clear so you can certainly see what is going on. But so far it is a well built design that gives you options and variations to choose no matter what you're doing. For those wondering will this fit my vacuum well you've got the outside that is about 37 and a half millimeters and then the inside which is about 32 millimeters so i'm sure you can find some sort of connection in order to put your um, vacuum hose in either on the outside or on the inside and worst case scenario just use a bit of duct tape as we always do to get by with these things so upon first inspection it is looking good i like the way it's built i like the way all the magnets allow it to come apart and go back together nicely and as I also like the fact it's nice and clear as well so you can see exactly what is going through but proof is in the pudding so let's do a test with it and see just how much dust it actually extracts up as it's machining so let me show you just how easy it is we've got a scrap piece of MDF held down onto the bed itself and we simply just bring this up slide it over put it into place tighten those two little grub screws up clamp one in and it should hold itself and then just tighten the other one up to be safe. So that is held in place now. What we can do at this point, obviously because we've not got the rest of the body on, is install the bit that we want. So we can just place that in. Obviously once you can get into the hole, struggling a little bit, there we are. No jokes. Right, pinch that up and then we'll just bring in the spanners to tighten that up a little bit more. So now the bit is all held in place, we can bring the body in and simply slide that up and over. And so it clips into place with a magnet and then again use the last piece, the shorter brush is what we're going to use today, slide that up and over, let that click into place. And what we can see is we've just got the bit sticking out of the bottom, the camera probably can't see that but it means that we can start to cut the material and as I say it will just leave enough room for the brushes to either catch the material or leave a bit of airflow and then obviously we can connect the vacuum to that. So let's do a quick test. I've deliberately used MDF because it's quite fibrous and a messy material when you're using the CNC with it. So it should give us a good indication of just how much dust this is going to extract. So the bit is just touching the top of the material. We've reset the zero. We've got the vacuum hose in place. Let's turn it all on and start the job. We're just going to cut out a little hole about 10 millimeters deep. So it'll do multiple circular passes, but we should be able to see how much dust is being extracted through the dust shoe. So the job has literally just finished and that's chewed out a pretty big hole in the MDF. Let's move it out the way. And now we can see there is no dust left. There's a little bit of fry around the edge as expected, as I say, because we're using an upcut bit in MDF, but no dust, which is exactly what we wanted to see. So I'd say that was a very successful test. It extracted all the dust, which given that it is MDF as well and can get very messy, means it did a perfect job. The design of it is brilliant, the way it's clear, all the magnets hold everything together nice and sturdy. It's also not bulky as well, it's very compact, which means it's a brilliant um, on the smaller machines, not taking up any extra room than it needs to. The coupler itself is lovely and sturdy and it holds it onto the um, spindle very nice. That is probably one of the best upgrades from the original version that they did for the smaller spindles a while back. So well done Science Smart, nice product and for $30, definitely a bargain and worth having worth everybody having on their cnc setup so yeah very nice if you are interested in purchasing one of these please check out the affiliate links in the description area below as i say they do not cost you any extra money i may get a tiny bit back which ultimately helps me to keep the channel going and reviewing different products and doing all the tutorials for you so thank you all very much for watching final thanks as always goes to my patrons i'll see you all on the next episode